Let's talk about the use of guys as a gender neutral term. Yeah, let's talk about how it's a completely harmless, innocuous term when referring to a bunch of people. For a lot of trans and non-binary folks, being referred to in this way triggers their dysphoria. Sorry to sound like a cunt, but that seems like a you problem. I don't think I or anyone else should be treading on eggshells and catering to the delicate sensibilities of others. And people will say, oh, I call all my friends guys, even my girlfriends. But your cis friends did not experience the trauma of being conditioned into a gender that is not theirs. It really does speak to the fragility of an individual when the word guys is likely to enact a trauma response in someone else. Being careful of every little harmless thing that we might say around others is no way to live. It's not mine or anyone else's fault if a colloquial term like guys is triggering to other people. That's their issue. For me, I have stopped saying it because I realize the importance of degendering our language. It should come to no surprise to people like me that this person doesn't really care that people like me may not want to degender language. Seems like they constantly want us to play by their rules. Language matters, and the words that we use inform the way we see the world. There are literally studies on this. I don't doubt that that's true. Does that mean we must adhere and conform to the conclusions of those studies? No. The sovereignty of the individual is paramount. So when we consider words like guys to be gender neutral and not girls or ladies, this fuels the narrative that man is default. You literally open your video by saying guys, guys is a, is a gender, gender neutral, neutral term. term. So what the bloody hell are you talking about? And this is the core of the patriarchy. There is no patriarchy. Look, you can use whatever words you want, but we... But that usually means that you don't think we can use whatever language we want. We have to consider their impact. No, we don't. And if someone tells you that the language you are using is hurting them, and you decide not to change because it is more comfortable for you, I think that says a lot about your character. Yeah, it means I won't bend the knee to anyone else's demands in the guise of compelled speech. That's guise as in G-U-I-S-E. Not guys means I'm not gonna change the way I talk just in case I might hurt your feelings. If I had to do that for every individual that I ever met for a multitude of different words, it just makes me wonder what words I would have left that are okay to say. Well, fuck that. I will not be coerced. I will not have my speech compelled by anyone. Either grow a spine or stay offline and don't go outside. Yes. Really? Someone said you weren't? Well, I gotta, whoever said that, uh, they should know that you know who and what you are better than they do. So they can't say what you are and what you aren't. I know who and what I am better than anyone else. That's what she said. No, you do not, Aunt Andy Cyborg. That's just silly. Oh, come on. What if I get the transgender affirming surgery and get a blowhole installed? Can we talk about how it's actually horrifying that the Kardashians went out of their way to have kids with black men just so that they could have a closer proximity to black culture? What? Just so that when you call them out on appropriating black culture, they- Formulating relationships with black people to the point where you give birth to potentially mixed race children is appropriating black culture. They bring up their proximity to black people and their half black children. They bred their children like dogs. You know, maybe there should be a national test for people to take before they're able to qualify to use social media. You know, essential traits like a sense of humanity or even humility, because this person has neither. And as a black woman, you cannot change my opinion on this. I wouldn't care to. So far, you seem to be rather irredeemable. And I know a lot of other black women and mixed black women feel the same way. Fuck them. That eventually at some point in their life, these kids will grow up and realize that one of the main reasons their parents had them is so that they could have a closer proximity to black culture. You're absolutely disgusting. It's gonna be a horrifying moment for those kids. Are you still talking about the Kardashians' children? Or your own children, if ever you have any, when they have the cognitive ability to realize who their mother is. 
Like I have said many times before, we are living in a world where it's difficult to tell what is and is not satire. Nature is gay. Sure. Yeah, oh, all right, all right. So then every species of every animal on Earth reproduces... How? And clownfish are trans. No, really, they are. Yeah, yeah, sure. I believe you. All clownfish are born as males, but when the dominant female in a school of fish dies, a male can transition to female and take her place. And it's not just clownfish. The ability to transition between sexes has been documented in thousands of other species. Probably something that they were created with the ability to do. Can we humans perform such a feat naturally? Much like the aforementioned clownfish? No, we do not. I'm not sure the innate natural biological ability of the clownfish would fit the definition of trans as we humans define it. This is the part where I would say, but you knew that already, but I'm not sure this person does. From striped maple trees that can change their biological sex and slugs that are hermaphrodites have both male and female transitioning is nothing but natural. This is a lie. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's natural to non-human creatures who have that ability. So if you're trying to imply that it's natural for a human to go through such a thing, well, I'm not necessarily against it, but natural, it ain't. Taylor cries into the ocean, making it bigger. It's a wonderful life, Wizard of Oz, to get diverse reboot. Oh, goody. Excellent. Super duper. Marvelous. I am sure nothing will go wrong. Legendary Hollywood gems like The Wizard of Oz and the Christmas classic It's a Wonderful Life are both getting what director and writer Kenya Barris is calling a diverse reboot. Yeah, you must feel the diversity quotas! The blackish creator also talked about his remake of the 1946 Frank Capra classic starring Jimmy Stewart and said he plans to tell the story but with a person of color instead. D-E-I! 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 Exporting diversely for profit is nothing new. That's if it makes any profit. <laughs> but the thing is, will literal white devils like me be able to go and see it? Because I'm willing to bet we're going to get people like this telling us that we can't. Do not go see that movie opening weekend. You can go see it on another weekend. Go see it on the second or third weekend. To do anything other than this is anti-black. And of course, if the movie fails, which it very likely will, who's going to get the blame? <laughs> Us white devils. Yeah, it's going to be blamed on racism. Oh, review bombing. Yet I'm sure they would have nothing to say if it was review bombed with positive reviews. So, when it comes to cultureless, genetically inferior male monkeys like me, damned if we do and damned if we don't. Oh, yeah. The goddamn plane has 